one, talking about leadership, one thing I learned among others from Miles, my time with Miles, which was a year and a half in the 70s, and it wasn't just that period with him, but surmising his whole career, which I was intimately knowledgeable about, as all of us are. When he chose musicians, it wasn't for what they were doing, it was for what they could do. And your, the responsibility for the leader is to be able to sort of read beyond, be between the lines, the potential for this particular musician to play something that you want. In your head, you have an idea. You don't maybe have it formed, but you have an idea. I'd like the drummer to be this kind of drummer. I'd like the bass to be. You know. So your job is to find somebody who not necessarily is playing that way, but you can see the potential for them playing that way. So it's not, it's not a directive. You've got to play the way I want you to play. But I sense in you that you would probably end up doing what I want anyway, sort of. And uh, that's very important. Now, you br bring up Bobby Avey, a pianist. Uh, he grew up in my area where we live in the Pocono Mountains, so I know him since he's 14, 15 years old. He came for lessons. My wife teaches ear training. Phil Woods lived there, you know, until he passed in October last year. And uh, we, had a, we had a pretty big musical um, community out there. And he was part of it, so I know him as a teenager. And of course, his growth is astounding, and he's a very creative force. But I know when I saw him when he was 15 years old that this is somebody I gotta watch. I could tell. Well, that's kind of the way you used to do it. I mean, there's other things, there's other variables. You know, I used to hear stories about guys hiring people, and pay, you know, they would pay them a certain amount or not pay them a certain amount. We don't get into that. It's about their abilities and potential, especially with young musicians like Bobby, he's, you know, several decades younger than me. So it's my job to get him to become who he really is. That's part of my responsibility. I played only one time, from I'm remembering right, I played with Saxophone Summit, with Joe Lovano and uh, Ravi Coltrane, maybe five years ago. I did play with Miles, in, in fact, it's part of the box set, but I believe that was JVC in New York at that time, 73. Um, but then there's a story that I'm gonna tell the audience. Uh, 50 years ago, almost to the day, I was studying with Charles Lloyd, and uh, I was 20 years old, and he asked me if I could do him a favor and drive his band to Newport. His band was Keith Jarrett, Jack DeJunette, and Cecil McBee. Uh, and sure enough, there was the same traffic, I think a different entrance. I, we had to stop, they had to walk, they had to get out because they had to play. Um, and of course, that afternoon, besides seeing Charles Lloyd, I saw Coltrane live, which I had many times by that time. Uh, but it was very notable because I was at Newport at that point, 20 years old, and first of all driving these guys, but then also to see Coltrane, especially to see Coltrane out of a club situation, because we're, so, we're so used to seeing him at Birdland or the Half Note, Village Vanguard, that when he played, a, you know, it's a different dynamic when you play for a big audience. So uh, that was a memory from Newport 50 years ago, 1966. Yeah. Good? Okay. Great.